welcome to this course on global marketing management and we were talking about the second section in this course that is global marketing environment of the various components of this global marketing environment we had discuss, started discussing about the cultural issues and buying behavior and this uh, the, uh, cultural issues and buying behavior they are spread over two modules that is module 8 and module 9 we have uh, we have talked about module 8 and today we will start with module 9 so uh, after giving a brief in introduction of uh, uh, this module, we will talk about the cultures and the marketing mix. That is precisely how the cultures affect the P's, the four P's of marketing. This is what we will we will talk about in culture and marketing mix. And then in module eight, we have in module eight we have seen uh, what what is culture and what are the various components or various elements of culture. Now in module nine, we will see what is organizational culture. And it is important to understand what is the organization culture and the various types of culture, uh, organization cultures because uh, this, is, uh, this is what determines how, what is the organizational response to the changing external and internal uh, environment. Then we will talk about global accounts management. This uh, is more related to business to business or industrial marketing. So I will give you a brief example. For example, we are talking of a company Suzuki. This Suzuki may be selling in 50 different countries across the world and uh, its car in 50 different countries across the world while it may be having 2,000 vendors supplying various components to it. So in each country if it has uh, 2,000 vendors then you see how many vendors it will have to deal across the globe that is 50 into 2,000. So now how to go about doing that? After that, we will talk about the global customer relationship management. From uh, from your from any of your previous course on marketing, you would have understand why it is important to have relationship with the customers because for a plain simple reason that we want to retain customers. So that is the most important task uh, that uh, that any marketing manager has to do. Now again, if the if the uh, continuing with the same example, if Suzuki is operating in fifty different countries. So, uh, will it have 15 di 50 different kind of customer relationship management programs or do or should it have only just uh, just one customer relationship management uh, program across the world. So, these are the things that we, we will talk about today. So, let us start with the introduction. Now, it is uh, you, you would have uh, studied this earlier that marketing mix is the set of choices the firm offers to its targeted markets. So, how a company what a company offers to its target market in terms of four P's and as target markets change these four P's also should change. Many firms vary their marketing mix from country to country depending on differences in national culture one economic development product standards distribution channels and so on. Now because countries differ along a whole range of dimensions of culture including social structures social classes that we have talked about in module 8, language, religion and education, these are the various components that uh, elements that make up the culture. So, countries they differ along uh, a whole range of dimensions of cultures. These differences have important implications for marketing strategy. Should we have a different kind of product in each country? Should we have or should a company have one single product across different countries? For instance, hamburgers do not sell well in Islamic countries where the consumption of ham is forbidden by Islamic law. So now, any company that wants to sell ham uh, uh, that is selling in Islamic countries, Islamic countries where Islamic law prevails, they have to look at what to sell. And culture is a key pillar of the marketplace. Success of any international marketing activity to a very large extent is driven by local culture and these cultural variables may act as barriers or opportunities. So, keep in mind that in module 8 we have seen that culture is important to, uh, to, uh, to study because it will tell what kind of marketing mix a company should pursue and it will also uh, pinpoint the marketing opportunities available. Now, let us see what is the impact of culture on the product policy. Now, 
कल्चरल नॉर्म्स हैव डिफरेंट एंड सिग्निफिकेंट इम्पैक्ट ऑन प्रोडक्ट पॉलिसी सर्टन प्रोडक्ट्स आर मोर कल्चर बाउंड देन अदर प्रोडक्ट्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल फूड बिवरेज एंड क्लोदिंग प्रोडक्ट्स दे टेंड टू बी वेरी कल्चरल सेंसिटिव वेल देर में भी सम प्रोडक्ट्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल ऑटोमोबील्स विच मे नॉट बी सो कल्चरल सेंसिटिव इन रिसेंट ईयर्स डोनट्स हैव बिन कैचिंग ऑन इन एशिया एज अ लग्जरी ट्रीट अर्लियर दीज प्रोडक्ट्स वेर नॉट बींग यूज इन एशिया इंटरनेशनल डोनट चेन सच एज डंकिन डोनट्स एंड क्रिस्पी क्रीमी हैव मॉडिफाइड देयर प्रोडक्ट ऑफरिंग्स इन द रीजन टू केटर टूवर्ड्स एशियन पैलेट्स Dunkin Donuts Taiwan for instance offer localized flavors such as green tea and honeydew melon Donut chains also lower the sugar content as Asians have a lower preference for sweet foods Products or services can also be banned or restricted due to cultural reasons In 2004 the government of Saudi Arabia banned the import and sale of mobile phones with cameras after report of misconduct photographing women by owners of such phone the implied meaning of a brand name also exemplify the role of culture in global marketing mix for example kitkat that is a chocolate from cadbury gained a strong following among japanese students because the name kitkat closely resembles a japanese expression kitto katsu used by students to wish each other good luck prior to exams culture norms sometimes open up new product opportunities in india the skin whitening uh, whitener market has been growing at an annual rate of around 20% as white skin is associated with beauty class and an upscale lifestyle how does culture affect pricing now again from any of your earlier marketing course you would have studied that the pricing policies are driven by four c's one is the customer the second is company company means company's cost company's objectives and company's strategy then the third is the competition and the fourth is the collaborators for example distributors and there can be banks and advertising agencies and so on and so forth so these are the four c's that that determine the company's pricing for example if the cost company's cost is higher high, uh, are higher then obviously the prices will be higher if the costs are lower then the prices will be lower if the company wants to be a market leader so the prices will be different if they want to be an uh, want to be in a technology leader then the prices may be different so customer willingness to pay for your product will obviously vary across cultures products that are perceived as good value in one culture may have little or no value in other culture for instance in western countries a high price is often seen as a signal of premium quality so this is the price quality relationship that exist higher the price the better the product uh, uh, will be however in emerging markets charging a higher price is often regarded as gouging the uh, the customers for many product categories odd pricing in which prices end with 9 5 8 in chinese speaking cultures another very uh, important component of the marketing mix is distribution and this distribution is also very culture sensitive so the cultural variables may also dictate distribution strategies retailer must often fine tune their practices when entering foreign markets because this is the most distribution is the most difficult thing to change when a country enters a for uh, when a company enters a foreign country because the distribution channels in a country has developed over a period of time and it it is very difficult to change distribution over time while prices can be adopted overnight distribution is one thing that cannot be uh, adopted uh, over period of several years also so walmart learned this lesson hard way in germany a market that the mega retailer was never able to crack grocery bagging turned out to be a no no for german shoppers as 
they do not like strangers handling their groceries. After many years of sustained losses, Walmart sold its 85 German stores to its German rival Metro in July 2006. So, companies often need to tweak their distribution models in emerging markets, even if their model is a key success factor in their home country. Now, you see that in order to enter an emerging market, they have to change their key success factor. While this distribution was a key success factor in their home country, when they are entering emerging markets, they have to change this, uh, this key success factor. For instance, Dell's direct sales model, which has long been the computer uh, maker's holy grail. In China, where to where face to face contact is important. When selling computers, Dell overhauled its direct sales model when it announced a deal in September 2007 to sell computers through Guomi, a, a major Chinese electronic retailers. So, in China, they did not went uh, face to face, but rather they, they started selling through a local Chinese electronic retailer. Promotion is another very cultural sensitive uh, component of, uh, of marketing mix because it is the most visible element of marketing mix. Culture will typically have a major influence on a firm's communication strategy. And when we are talking of communication strategy, that will include both the verbal and non-verbal communication. Key events of a country's cultural calendar, for example, Chinese New Year, Ramadan, Holi, Diwali often creates major marketing opportunities. Advertising styles that are effective in certain cultures can be counterproductive in other cultures. For instance, in high context cultural communication styles tend to be more indirect and subtle, making use of less copy and more symbols. So, in high context culture, more symbols are used because less copy is being used because people is interpret what is written in reference to the con contextual cues that we were talking about in, in module 8. That is why they, they use more, uh, more symbols. While in low context cultures, advertising use more copy, factual data and reasoning because here the contextual cues are absent. Country of origin strategies may also be need to be customized across countries. For example, in collectivist cultures that we have seen in, mo in module 8, local brands are likely to benefit from, from touting their local roots. So, they can come up with the, with the spirit of nationalism, local or, or homegrown. Local culture taboos and norms, they also influence advertising styles. In the United States, Gidget a talking Chinuhua is the advertising mascot for Taco Bell, a Mexican style fast food chain owned by Yum Brands. However, Gidget does not feature in Taco Bell's Singapore's ad. Singapore's large Muslim population was the main motivation for dropping Gidget. Muslim views dogs as unclean animals. So, in module 8, now we will talk about organization cultures. In module 8, we have talked about, uh, we have def defined cultures and we have uh, talked about various elements of culture. Now, we will see wh wh what is organization culture and as I, is, I, has, I had mentioned earlier, it is important to understand organization culture because it will, it will de decide the company's response to the changing environment. So, organization culture, most companies are, ca are characterized by their organization or corporate culture. Deshpande and Webster, they have defined organization culture as the pattern of shared values and beliefs that help individual understand organization functioning and thus provide them with the norms of behavior in the organization. So, this is what is important. 
to understand that the pattern of shared values and beliefs that will help the employees to understand how organizational functions because that will provide them with the norms of behavior in the organization what is right and what is wrong shared beliefs relate to leadership style organizational attributes bonding mechanism within the organization and overall strategic emphasis let us see the various types of organizational cultures they can be described along the two dimensions one dimension is vertical and horizontal distinguishes this uh, this axis distinguishes di distinguishes between organic processes versus mechanistic process horizontal axis move uh, moves from internal maintenance versus external positioning the meaning of this is organize of organization process is the emphasis will be on flexibility spontaneity and individuality while mechanistic means emphasis on control stability and order horizontal axis which moves from internal maintenance to external positioning internal maintenance means integration efficient and smooth operations external ma uh, positioning means competitive action and achievement differentiation this scheme leads to four types of organizational cultures which are labeled as clan culture adhocracy culture hierarchy culture and market culture now look at this so this vertical uh, this vertical axis moves from organic process to mechanistic process and this uh, sorry say this horizontal or vertical axis moves from organic processes to mechanistic process now in this when we when we make these two axes then we get four cells when the organization is more organic and more externally positioned that is the cell 1 then the type of culture is called as adhocracy the dominant attributes here are entrepreneurship creativity and adaptability leadership style is entrepreneur innovator and risk taker bonding is entrepreneurship flexibility and risk and strategic emphasis is towards innovation growth and new resources when the culture is high on organic processes but low on external positioning that is it is high on internal maintenance then the type of culture is called as clan culture dominant attributes here are cohesiveness participation teamwork and sense of family leadership style is mentor facilitator parent figure bonding is loyalty tradition interpersonal cohesion and the strategic emphasis is towards developing human resource commitment and morale now you see when the culture is high on 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 organic process but it moves along internal maintenance to external positioning now you see the uh, here the, uh, the strategic emphasis is towards innovation growth new resources while here it is on human resources commitment morale when the culture is low on organic process that is it is high on mechanistic process and also low on external positioning that is high on internal maintenance this one so here the culture is high on internal maintenance and high on mechanistic uh, processes this is called as hierarchy here the dominant attribute is order rules and regulations and uniformity leadership style is coordinator administrator bonding is rules policies and procedures and the emph strategic emphasis is towards stability predictability and smooth operation when the culture is high on external positioning and high on mechanistic process then the organizational culture is called as market 
here the dominant attributes are competitiveness goal achievement leadership style is decisive achievement oriented bonding is goal orientation production and competition while strategic emphasis is towards competitive advantage and market superiority so when you see that on the right hand side there are certain things which are common and on the left hand side there are certain things uh, which are common on the upper side there are certain things uh, which are common and on the lower side which uh, there are certain things which are common so here there are certain things which are common here there are certain things which are common and which are different similarly above this there are certain things which are common and below this there are certain things which are common now mo most multinational firms have elements of several types of cultures despite the fact that managers these days are exposed to similar business concepts and technologies cultural differences in management styles and practices they persist in a survey that polled 700 managers worldwide the seven distinct business cultures were identified and these are the seven distinct uh, cultures that were identified the first is go getting it means staff highly enthusiastic about their work risk taking attitude decision making is highly charged debates and not via consensus this this exists in united states the second type of business culture that was identified was worker b here the task may overlap responsibilities are shared decisions are consens consensual and there is a strong sense of pride this exists in hong kong the third type of business culture that uh, was found was people who care employees assist poor performers spend time making sure staff members are happy this happens in sweden easy going workers do their task freely emphasis on getting the job done this happens in australia stall worlds roles functions clearly defined aversion to change for change sake this happens in united states the sixth is mechanistic managers work by the book culture egalitarianism but with a strong sense of individual responsibility this happens in New in the netherlands and family entrepreneurship roles and functions are structured on family principle management is patriarchal that happens in india multinational firms regardless of size must heed to such differences but not all multi mncs they succeed for example kia motors america exemplifies how a strong hierarchical company culture can create cultural discord the american subsidiary of hyundai which is a korean car maker experienced a major management shake up in recent years one important reason behind the exodus of talent was that many of the former us us executives deeply disliked hyundai's authoritarian management style with little tolerance for disagreement the third component of this uh, module is global account management coordination of management of global customers accounts across national borders are referred to global account management the coordination of the management of global customer accounts they across national borders are referred to global accounts management global customer accounts due to their share size often have major leverage over their suppliers in their drive to squeeze cost these customers accounts will often strive for global contract with global global prices i'll go back to the example that i gave uh, uh, in the start of this module so there there is a, uh, there is a company suzuki that is operating in 50 different countries and in each country it has 2500 vendors so now you see that this uh, suzuki will be dealing with so many uh, so many vendors instead of see, dealing with so many vendors what suzuki try is to have those accounts those uh, customers those suppliers who are big in size and they can supply uh, suzuki across the world and 
global retailers such as Carrefour, Walmart and Royal Ahold try to gain a cost advantage over their low, lower local competitors by negotiating the best terms with their suppliers. So now their suppliers, one supplier is supplying to, to 50 countries where Suzuki is selling. And because Suzuki is a much bigger company, so it has the power to negotiate with these suppliers. And at the same time, global customers can also offer tremendous opportunities. Global account management should ultimately lead to a win-win situation for the both. For both, now Suzuki is benefited because the same supplier or the same people are are, are supplying it across across the world. While these vendors, they do not have to sell to too many companies, and they are selling to one just one company across the world. And therefore, this global account management would ultimately lead to a win-win situation for both the parties. And the requirements are. It may require a single point of contact, may demand coordination of resources for serving customers, may push for uniform pricing and terms of trade, may have standardized products and services, may require a high degree of consistency in service quality and performance, and it may require support in countries where the company has no presence. Now, for managing a global account relationships, it is important to clarify the role of a global account management team. Make incentive structure realistic, pick the right global account managers, create a strong support network, make sure that the customer relationship operates at a, at a more than one level and should, have a, should be flexible and dynamic. The last component of this module is global customer relationship management. So, uh, the customer relationship management uh, programs uh, exist in, 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 different, in each country every, and in every company. But now, how to go about managing the global customer relationships across the world? The process of managing interaction between the company and its customers is called as customer relationship management. Now, it is important to, uh, to have relationship with the customers because then you will be able to, because then the company will be able to identify uh, the changing customer needs and requirements and therefore, it is more likely to fulfill their changing needs and requirements. That is why every company wants to have customer uh, or every company has a customer relationship management program and also they want to retain the existing customers because that is much more cheaper as compared to acquiring new customers all the time. So, the objective of CRM is to maximize the lifetime value of the customer for the company and satisfy the customer by being customer focused. So, therefore, this customer relationship management, it helps in customer retention, helps in richer communication and interactive marketing, it helps in tailored services and helps to maintain a closer contact with the customers. Now, multinational corporations, they apply CRM programs across national borders. In China, Volkswagen decided to implement a CRM project by building a data warehouse that can store information about millions of dealers and prospective customers. So, for, for, a, for a company, there are two types of customers, one is the, the dealers and another are, 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 are consumers. This system will allow Volkswagen's to track prospective customers from awareness stage to purchase intentions, offering insight, insights into reasons for purchase and non-purchase. So, Volkswagen is spent around dollar 3.75 million to help to develop the customer database. There can be several benefits that can be derived from globalizing CRM programs. Country units can share ideas and expertise on CRM programs. So, what they are, do, one, one, uh, what they are doing in one country can be shared with, with, uh, with, uh, with the country, with, with the com company subsidiaries across the world. Typically, customer relationship evolves through distinct phases, each one with its unique requirements. The first phase, phase of this program is customer acquisition. This phase involves prospects evaluation, acquisition management and recovery of old customers. Old customers means those who have switched the brand or they are inactive. So, the first phase of any program is uh, 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 is customer acquisition. 
The second phase is retention. That is the most crucial area here. It will include customer evaluation. That is the what is the lifetime value of the customer. The higher the lifetime value of the customer, the more important uh, the customer is for the company. Customer complaint management, retention mechanism. That is how how we will we will retain the customers. For example, what kind of loyalty programs we will have. Upselling. The company tries to sell higher margin items to the current customers. And cross selling, the firm tries to sell other products in its portfolio to the existing client, and then referral management that you refer this company to your friends, so it can include word of mouth. And third and final phase is the termination of relationship. So this is, so the first is. First stage of this program is acquisition. The second is retention, and the third is uh, is termination. So this is also important. The how that uh, company should terminate uh, its relationship and how it terminates the relationship with the customers. This may happen because of customer related factors such as customer simply losing interest in the category, or he may be switching to another supplier, or it can be possible that the customer has. Achieved the lifetime value, or company has achieved the uh, achieved whatever it wanted to achieve from a certain customer. So the customer has reached his uh, his lifetime. So he may not be any more profitable for the customer so for the company. The benefits of any customer relationship programs is that it leads to a better understanding of of customer expectations and behavior. It helps in able uh, to measure the customer's value to the company. And it lowers customer acquisition and retention cost, and it also helps to interact and communicate with customers in countries where access to traditional channels is limited. But then there are certain challenges also, and that include building up of a customer database that is time-consuming, consuming and expensive. And then it uh, lots of clutter get, gets in, so th uh, the customers start treating uh, your messages as spam. Then there are cultural and language differences, privacy and other government regulations. They they, they are different in different countries. Local talent, how how much and what kind of local talent is available for uh, for building up this CRM? So a scarcity of qualified staff to run and support the CRM projects. May not be there in a country, and local infrastructure may not support the type of uh, uh, CRM program that you want to build up. Now, how to build a successful CRM impl CRM implementation? First is to make the program business driven rather than IT driven. So, a CRM program is business driven. It is not only about information technology. Monitor and keep track of data protection and privacy laws in these countries where CRM systems are being used or are in planning stage. So this is important that you keep on looking at what are the data protection and privacy laws in different countries that uh, you are operating. And a good database is the main prerequisite for having a successful CRM uh, implementation. And rewards being sent out to customers are relevant, targeted, and personal. And to uh, to these are the references from where uh, this lecture was uh, prepared. So you can go you can go through these uh, these textbooks if you want to understand more about this. Thank you.